Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody is doing well out there today. Uh, in this video, I wanna show something that I've been meaning to show for a while, uh, but just for some reason I've never done, and that's uh, showing how to set up something called Canboard. So as you can see here on the Canboard website, this is a uh, open source uh, Kanban project management software uh, that lets you basically you can host it on your own Docker server or whatever. And that's of course how we're gonna do it here. So this uh, this video kind of presumes that you've already got Docker and uh, ideally in this case, Portainer installed, set up, ready to go. Uh, we are going to just do this as a local install. Uh, we're not gonna do a, uh, a like a, a web access, like a remote access kind of thing on this. Uh, I've done enough videos on, to show how to do that. Uh, if you've got questions on that, of course, I can probably point you in the right direction to uh, to go through the process of getting, uh, getting this remote access set up. Um, but basically what I wanna show you here is just Canboard in general. Uh, so here we are uh, on their, uh, like I said, on their website, you can kind of see how this works. This is one of those, if we just come over to what I've already got set up here, this is one of those that when you're, you know, working on something or whatever, you can you know, move these things around and kind of keep track of what's going on. You can open these up, you can put in, uh, you know, descriptions and, and edit tasks and do all kinds of great stuff. And you're like adding comments, um, like um, comment, and then of course we can click save. Uh, and then we've got a little comment down here, so you can kind of keep track of what's going on, uh, who's doing what, what's assigned to who, uh, those sorts of things. It's a very uh, basic thing. This is very similar to, uh, if you're familiar with Trello, uh, this is basically what Trello is. Of course, just with a different skin uh, and self-hosted versus using uh, a third-party service. And of course, that's what we're here to do is self-host as much as we possibly can. So the process of going through here is pretty straightforward. Uh, as far as getting everything set up. There are some things uh, that we will wanna talk about as far as like plugins, for instance. Um, by default, you will not be able to install plugins. So I'm gonna have to show you the process of uh, kind of going through and setting that up. Um, there, there's, a, there's a file that you need to change and modify uh, and make some, and, and just kind of uh, go through. So uh, basically here's how it works. This is the Canboard uh, official website uh, where you can uh, grab a Docker Compose file here. Uh, this one uh, is just a generic. Uh, I wouldn't use this one uh, because it's using SQLite. Uh, I figure if you, and maybe SQLite is fine. If it's just gonna be you, uh, just keeping track of like household chores, uh, small projects. Uh, but if you start adding more people, more users, things like that, you'll want to go over here and use this uh, Maria database version uh, so that you can actually have a good MySQL database uh, to store all of your data in. Um, and you can use this basically as is if you want to. Um, there are some changes that I've made to mine uh, that, that we'll take a look at, but basically, uh, like it says here, it's a version two uh, Docker Compose. Uh, we're gonna run two services. The first one uh, listed here is Canboard. Uh, we're gonna use the, the, the factory or the, the stock image for that, the latest version. This by default wants to run port 80 or 443. You can change those if you want. Uh, I've changed mine to 89. Uh, since I'm gonna do everything locally, I don't need an SSL. But even if I did, I would use Nginx Proxy Manager to issue the SSL uh, on the reverse proxy. So uh, port 80, uh, like I said, I changed mine to 89, uh, but you can omit 443 if you want to there. Um, below that, we've got some volumes. Uh, we've got uh, a Canboard data, plugins, and SSL. Again, you don't necessarily need this SSL volume here, um, but uh, but it's there by default. <clears throat> Below that, we've got an environmental variable here for the database URL. This works. I'm just not a fan of how they did it, so I changed it. Uh, down here, our second service will be the database. Uh, like it says here, we're going to use the latest version of Maria database. Uh, and we've got a you know username, password, uh, root password, that sort of thing. Uh, those are all pretty standard things. What you will want to do uh, is change uh, the password. Like right here, it says Canboard Secret. If you decide to use this stack or this compose, uh, whatever you change uh, Canboard Secret to here, you'll also wanna change uh, right there uh, in that environmental variable. And then below that, we've got volumes for all of the things we've already talked about. Again, this is the stock, uh, the default Docker Compose for this. And again, I have changed it uh, to kind of fit my needs a little bit better. So if we come over here uh, to, uh, to GitHub, uh, we can take a look here. Again, version two, uh, I put the database service first doesn't really matter. Uh, I just like to do that one first when I can. Uh, below that, you can see that I've mounted this volume here. Uh, that actually wasn't part of uh, the database image before. Um, so I've gone ahead, oops, and added that. Uh, I've made, I also set up the environmental variables 
here again. Uh, I set up a root password. Uh, I've added some notes here on things to change. Uh, below that, we've got our CAN board uh, image. Again, this is the the, the stock uh, official CAN board image that we're going to use there. Again, I changed this to port 88 uh, from 80. And then below that, we've got some volumes, uh, again, for data, plugins, and the SSL. Again, you don't need that one, but it's there. <clears throat> I also set up the environmental variables down here. Uh, the database host will be DB, and we get that from right up here uh, at the top. A database user is Canboard, uh, database password Canboard, uh, same for the database name. Again, change the password. Uh, you should always change the password there. And then below that, we've got, um, it depends on DB and links uh, to the DB there, uh, just to make sure everything connects the way we want it to. And that's basically all we need to do here. Um, and, and like I said, once you get that up and running and everything's working, uh, basically you'll have you know, your own uh, project management system set up and ready to go uh, where you can, uh, you know, create more users, create multiple projects, put uh, multiple tasks and subtasks in each project, that sort of thing. Uh, so it's a very versatile user-friendly setup. But what I wanna do is actually kill my current instance here. Uh, if I come back over here to Portainer, uh, what I wanna do <clears throat> is actually uh, go ahead and delete both of these like so and just say, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do that. <laughs> And then back over here on this editor, there's actually a couple of things that I forgot to do uh, that I want to add. Um, and just because I'm gonna be lazy here, I'm gonna come back over to here. Two, two, is it in here? Will this one work? There we go. Uh, I just wanna make sure I got my syntax right there. And this will be updated um, in the stack or in the Docker Compose um, on uh, the link in the description down below. Like so, so now it'll just automatically restart. If something goes wrong, it crashes, whatever. Uh, I should automatically restart. The other thing I wanna do is change this from Canboard to Canboard 2 uh, for this. And uh, I fat fingered that. So all of this will be correct in the Docker Compose that I'll have linked in the description down below. Uh, but basically this is what we're gonna look at. Uh, all of this, pretty straightforward. We've kind of gone through everything. So what I'm gonna do is uh, click on update the stack. You'll click on deploy, same idea. So once we've got that here, we can see that uh, those deployed fairly quickly. If I open this up, uh, it's writing a new private key, so that's fine. And then down here, uh, we've got uh, the database up and running. So that's where we would normally click over here and uh, just go to port 88 and uh, then log in. But we wanna do something before we go that route. Okay, so in order to uh, move forward appropriately, the first thing we wanna do is edit our default.config.php file. And in order to find that, because it gets kind of stored in a weird spot, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I have all this in the description down below, but we're gonna do a find name config.default.php. We're just gonna click go. Okay, so we've got a couple of different results here. What we wanna do is kind of take a look and uh, figure out which one of these, I can never remember if it's diff or merge. I think it's gonna be merged that we're after here. Uh, oops, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna grab this like so. <clears throat> And what I'll do is I'll do a CD, or nope, I'm gonna do CP space, and then I'll paste that in, and I'll do space, and I'll paste it again. But what I'm gonna do is take out this dot default here and hit enter. <clears throat> so basically what we're looking for now is we want to actually just uh, do a nano of that. So we're gonna edit that config file, and hopefully this will tell us what, or give us what we're looking for. And I think we're actually pretty close here. So what I wanna do is actually just scroll down a bit. <clears throat> and we'll keep scrolling right there. You can see that's where the uh, plugins uh, directory URL is. Uh, that's pulling from their site. Uh, right here, plugin installer, we wanna change this to true. Like so, do control O and enter. <clears throat> and then what we can do is actually come back over here uh, and just reload uh, this Canboard uh, application. Click restart. And then if we come back over and refresh, hopefully, if everything goes correctly, the plugins, there we go. So now we can actually install our plugins. But before we go that far, there's one more thing I wanna do uh, just to make sure that we don't have any issues later. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is uh, come back over here to our config file. I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit further here. Uh, so, if you want to use uh, a mail system, which I encourage you to do, if you're going to have uh, due dates and assignments and things like that, you'll also need to come into here and um, 
you'll want to make some changes here, like the where it says uh, define mail from. You'll want to put in uh, some sort of an email address there uh, to uh, so that when somebody gets an email, it'll have, it'll have a from email address. Uh, below that, if you want to do a, a blind carbon copy, you can put an email address there as well. Uh, below that, uh, <clears throat> define mail transport. Uh, you've got some different options here. Uh, chances are you'll use SMTP. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and delete that and say SMTP. Um, if you were going to use Gmail, this would be smtp.gmail.com. Uh, and this would probably be like uh, 580, oops, 587, like so. And then your email address at address.com and your password. And then uh, basically um, you can switch this. Um, I, I think uh, for this, you want TLS like so. Uh, and that should be good to go as far as Gmail is concerned. Uh, if you wanted to use that, uh, below it, we keep scrolling down a little bit uh, right here. So by default, and I don't know why it's set up SQLite as the database driver. <clears throat> uh, we're going to change that to uh, my SQL, uh, our database name. Uh, we've actually got uh, right over here. Uh, we can just actually copy this and let's, uh, let's just drag that over there like that. Like so, so the database username, Canboard, a database password, uh, in my instance, gonna be Canboard, uh, yours should not be. Um, and then over here, the database host will be DB. Again, we got that from this service uh, right up here. And then the database name, also Canboard. But then you can keep scrolling down and there are uh, more things in here. You don't need to change any of the database uh, ports, SSL keys, certs, CAs, uh, the certified cert, you don't need to do any of that. Uh, below that, we've got LDAP stuff. If you wanted to integrate LDAP uh, into your security, you could do that uh, through this section here. We'll keep scrolling down. There's some reverse proxy stuff in here uh, that you shouldn't need uh, to do anything with uh, because we're, if you were to do it uh, the way I demonstrate on, on this channel regularly, it'd be through Nginx Proxy Manager. So you wouldn't need to uh, do any of the, the reverse proxy stuff that they show here. Um, you can enable HSTS for hyper strict uh, transport security protocol. Uh, you can do that if you want. Uh, if, uh, make sure that your domain is set up to support it. If you go through Cloudflare, I know you can enable it pretty easily there. Beyond that, I can't help much. Uh, X-Frame, um, so this is enable or disable. Uh, you can uh, escape HTML inside Markdown. Uh, there, you can use API authentication headers, enable URL, URL rewrites. If you wanted to do that and set that to true, I also believe you would need an HT access file in your root. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, <clears throat> there's some brute force logins stuff in here. Uh, you can say after three failed attempts, uh, then do hit them with captcha. Um, brute force lockdown after six, lock them out entirely. Uh, lockdown duration be 15 minutes by default. Session duration, uh, you can change that to whatever you'd like. Uh, there is a link right here uh, where you can get more information about that. Um, and the session handler uh, would be a database uh, or PHP. Uh, database is probably the way to go, but you could change that to PHP if you wanted to. If you needed to use a proxy for whatever reason, you could set that up here. Um, and then uh, the HTTP, uh, verify SSL certificate. So uh, basically all of this stuff, you don't need to change, do anything with, but once we're done, again, control O to uh, save, control X to exit. And then we wanna go back and actually just go ahead and restart uh, this uh, application again, like so. That should go pretty quickly. And then we can come back over uh, and uh, refresh, see if it makes us log in again. There we go. So that's how we know things have changed is it made us log back in like so. And then once you're logged in, again, you can install uh, whatever plugins you want. I advise you though, to do some research on these. There are uh, several websites out there that will tell you if there's any security issues uh, with these plugins. Uh, so you can take a look at that. <clears throat> Down here, you can go to like my profile um, and you can change your, or you can look at your dashboard. Uh, you can um, look at your time tracking, uh, previous logins, persistent connections. Uh, you can edit your profile, uh, which I would encourage you to do. Uh, not use uh, admin as the default. That's just terrible uh, security. So we'll go ahead, oops. Like so, time zone, application default. 
Uh, I'm in America and I'm close to Denver. So I'll go ahead and select that. Application language, uh, I'm gonna set English US. Administrator role, you can save that like so. And then your avatar, of course, we may as well do that while we're here and uh, upload my avatar. Now that's there, it's also changed up there as well. Password, I, I would encourage you uh, to change that from admin uh, to something else. And then click save. <clears throat> Two-factor authentication, if you wanted to use something like Authy, which I encourage, especially uh, if you're gonna have this set up on a, like so that it's accessible from the internet, uh, enabling two-factor authentication is a great way to do this. Uh, I would encourage you to do that for that matter. Um, <clears throat> let's see, below that, uh, we've got public access. Uh, this is actually uh, for RSS feeds and iCal events. Um, so this isn't like setting a URL or anything like that. Uh, notifications, again, uh, you can set these however you'd like to get them. Uh, you can be, you can say what you wanna get uh, notifications for. Uh, only tasks assigned to me, that's probably fair enough. <clears throat> External accounts, uh, I don't have that enabled or set up. Integrations, uh, nothing there is set up. API, if you needed an API token for something, uh, there you go. And authentication, uh, you can uh, manage that there as well. So uh, pretty straightforward, easy to set up. I didn't wanna go through uh, the, the individual project settings because everybody's gonna do that a little bit differently, but I did wanna cover some of the security and login stuff because I think everybody should look through that if nothing else. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It really does help me out quite a bit. Uh, of course, like I mentioned, everything will be available in the description down below uh, so that you can uh, deploy this on your own server. Um, while you're down there, there are some ways you can support the channel if you wanna do that. Of course, you're not obligated to in any way, but uh, it's always much appreciated. Uh, I do wanna give a big shout out to the people who do support the channel, whether it's through channel memberships or Patreon. Thank you guys so much uh, for your support. It's really, really appreciated, uh, especially with everything going on right now. You guys are rock stars. Thank you so much. Um, but I think with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.